Good morning, this is Tom doing another unboxing. This is a t piece of test equipment. And I've been shopping for one of these for a while on eBay, looking for one in decent shape. Not too bad packed, you know. A lot of packers think by putting things against the side of the box and making it tight, they're safe. One good whack on the side of this and you're going to damage this. Should at least you should have really two inches around every item. The foam is nice, but they shouldn't. Ha they should have a bigger box and have foam there. Hopefully, there's no damage to this. It looks okay. <clears throat> but I wish people that sold electronics on eBay did a better job. Oh yeah, and I just realized sticking my hand under this, there's no foam underneath it. So there was foam on top, but none underneath it, none on the one side. So one good whack on the bottom or on that side and this thing would be damaged. You got to have cushioning completely on every side of every of the item, especially when you're dealing with old tube equipment. And that's what this is. Trying to let my camera focus. One of my favorite YouTubers is Bob. B. Anderson TV and he does TV restorations and he has one of these and he's done a number of videos on it and he uses it all the time. It's a capacitor checker and it's made by solar and it's a really it's just a neat looking piece of equipment. This here is a uh, eye tube with the green fluorescent eye um, I'm not going to power this up on this video, by the way. I need to open it up and look at the capacitors in it and see what kind of condition it's in before I even think about powering it up. The interesting thing about this one, I've, you see these a lot on eBay. They go for uh, a fair amount of money, but they're usually a different model number. And I can't remember what the other model number is that you usually see on eBay, but it's not this one. This one is different. And the this is model number CB dash 2UA and the other one is like 100 or something it's different and the other thing is different is this says 120 volts the other one is 110 um, now either one of these would run on our voltage in the United States uh, the 110 is a little underpowered but you know the US used to use 117 volts uh, but that's different so I don't know what the difference in this model is other than that that I have seen. I uh, have tried to look it up online and haven't found a good reference for it yet. But I will keep searching. So I just wanted to give you a quick look at it. It looks in decent shape. Uh, you know that thing is bent up a little. But it turns freely. All the knobs turn freely. And it's missing its label. You can see where it was. They had labels in the top of these with instructions on how it works. You can see the old glue is there. Somebody refinished this too, I think, and polished it up. Oh, that's fallen off, but that's a couple little screws. I'll fix that. It's got nice brass coverings, nice wooden case, and just a cool looking piece of equipment from the 40s and 50s, I guess. I'm not sure when these were made. I'm guessing the 19, late 40s, early 50s. But they're a capacitor checker. I don't have a capacitor checker. I know usually I replace capacitors, but every once in a while it's nice to know how they're actually checking. And the nice thing about this one, by the way, as long as we're talking about it, is this puts high voltage through the capacitor which gives you a true reading of how good the capacitor is and whoever owned this before actually wrote the voltages on here you can see one through five let me try to focus this one through five here and then they stuck with tape here what you get 75 volts 130 volts 210 volts 300 volts or 350 volts you're actually putting that much voltage through the capacitor under test and you get a good uh, reading of how much leakage it has with real voltage going through it. Where if you use a modern uh, 
digital multimeter, which I have one that does test capacitors, they don't put voltage through them. They put a very minimal amount of voltage through them, and it's not a very good, uh, it's not a very accurate checker. So this will be fun to play with. I'll probably have it out in some future videos. And I might even, I'm probably going to check some of the capacitors I pull out of that Kenwood just to see what they uh, test as, if they were leaky or not. Just for fun, even though I'm putting all new ones in it regardless. Even if they were testing good, I'm still putting the new ones in. Thanks for watching. This is Tom saying 73.